Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create pop art in the style of Andy Warhol. For this example, I have chosen to use Lady Gaga. As you can see here, our end result will closely resemble a work by Warhol of Marilyn Monroe. There is no quick solution, filter or button you can press to acquire this effect in Photoshop. What I'm about to show you are the few simple steps that I took to get from this original image to the Warhol effect here on the right. So let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new canvas, File New, and I think I'm going to go for a A4 landscape. So I'm going to create an A4 canvas, let's make that 150 dots per inch resolution and let's rotate the canvas counterclockwise and I'm going to come over to my layers and I'm going to grab that original image of Lady Gaga and paste that on and I'm simply going to resize this image to a suitable size that looks okay to me now before we start to add color effects, we're going to need to prepare this image. Pop art was originally created using a screen print process, so we are going to need to create the illusion of this by creating high contrast between the white and the black. Here is one I prepared earlier. As you can see, there is a high contrast on the hair and on the facial features. This is a good base for which we will use in future to add the colour later. So how are we going to do this? Let me show you. So we're going to come back to our original image and we're going to start by making this image grayscale. Come up to image mode grayscale and we're not going to flatten that just yet. So with the image set to grayscale we're going to duplicate the layer and we're going to call this layer hair and we're going to rename the layer underneath face and we're going to start with the hair layer we're going to use the levels we're going to come to image adjustments and levels and what we're going to do we're going to alter the contrast here we will be focusing to get the right effect on the hair so I'm going to come over to the the, um, the level controls and we're just going to tweak the hair just to push up that contrast. Okay, let's, let's look for that. Here we go. Now we're getting some really nice contrast on the hair there, as you can see. So just going to tweak that a little bit further until we've got our desired effect. Now, you can see why we created the separate layers because creating the effect we want on the hair has made the face and the rest of the image all dark. That is not what we want. So once we are happy with the hair we can come over to our layers panel and we can toggle the visibility of this layer to reveal the layer underneath. Next we're going to come to our face layer, click on that face layer and we're going to go to image adjustments and levels and we're going to change the levels of the face to push up the contrast and get the desired effect. So again, let's tweak our options here. And what we want to try and do is break down some of that detail in the face, get a nice contrast in the face. Let's just tweak a bit of this and let's have a look. And yeah, I think I'm happy with that. And again, as you can see, um, using the levels as we have done on the face layer, you can see there's not a lot of detail on the hair. So again, that's the reason why we went and duplicated that layer. Now, once we're happy with both layers, it's time to blend them together. So let's come back over to our layers panel and toggle the visibility of the hair layer, bring that back. Let's bring our canvas a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. And let's start to delete some of that information from the hair layer 
and blend these two together. So I'm going to click on the hair layer. I'm going to come over to my menu and click the eraser tool. And let's get ourselves a bigger brush. We can toggle the size of the brush by pressing on the keyboard. And we can start to delete this information underneath, as you can see here. So let's get rid of that. Let's delete around here. And as we can see, just around the hairline there, it's not looking particularly natural. I'm going to come over to the brushes. I'm going to choose a, a gritty brush. I'm just going to boost that up. And I can start to blend that in. There you go. It looks a little bit more natural. And there is our pop art base. Now, as simple as this process is, this is pretty much the most difficult part to create the pop art. Once you've got a good base for your pop art, the rest is easy. Now we are ready to start to take this forward and add the colors. Now, in Photoshop, the key to creating the same Warhol effect is to use the blending layer options. For example, let's start with the foreground. Okay, so I'm going to come over to some colors that I've prepared earlier. I'm going to select this orange here and come back to my image. And before we do anything, I'm going to come over to my image and mode and just change it back to RGB. And don't flatten that. That is going to enable us to use the image, the colors on the image rather. Come over to my layers panel. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this foreground. Okay, then I'm going to come over, come over to my paint bucket and let's fill the whole layer. Okay, now you can see the whole canvas has turned orange. Now if I come over to my layers panel and I come up to the top where my layer blending options are and click on the drop down and click multiply, you can see the effect. The colour seems to reveal all that is black on the layers beneath. And this is pretty much the process we are going to use to add all of the colours to our pop art. So, next, I'm going to come over to my layers and I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to call this Hair. And I'm going to toggle the visibility of the foreground. So, it's out of sight for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a thick brush. Let's come over and select a thick brush. Let's make that a little bit bigger here, and then maybe a little bit more. That'll do for now. And whoops, undo that, Command Z. And I'm going to come over to my colors again, and I'm going to select this yellow, my reference. And I'm going to start to color in the hair and I'm just going to come around like so and as you can see right now we have just just a block of color on top and just going to speed this up so you don't have to watch me do it all And once I've colored my hair, again, I'm going to come up to my blending options and I'm going to select multiply. And with that hair layer sorted, I'm going to create a new layer called face. Okay. And again, I'm going to toggle the visibility of this hair layer. Let's just get it out of the sight for now. I'm going to come over to my colors and select a skin tone I prepared earlier. And again, with the brush tool, let's increase that size. I'm just going to draw over the face. And there it is. Uh, don't worry about being too neat and accurate at this stage, as we can do this later. Once we have done this, again, we're going to come over to our blending options and click on multiply. So next, 
we're going to toggle the visibility of this layer and bring back the foreground. What we're going to do now is we're going to select this layer and we're going to start to delete some information from this layer to reveal the layer underneath. And you'll end up with something that looks like this. Now, next we're going to need to, le to delete the hair section. This is easy, as you can simply toggle the visibility of the hair layer. And we can use the magic wand to select everything outside of the hair layer. And if we come to select inverse and come back to our foreground and simply press delete, everything has been deleted. Now, what we can do here is just quickly neaten up some of that area there. And that is looking quite good. And if we bring back our face layer by toggling that visibility, we can see that there's a little bit of work that needs to be done to this layer to get rid of the overlapping colors. And we have our color layers all finished and ready. Last, we need to color the lips and the eyes and we'll be almost done. So, like before, we're going to create two new layers. We're going to call one layer lips and the next layer we're going to call eyes. And we're going to focus on the lips quickly. Let's zoom right into the lips and I'm going to click on the face layer and I'm going to use selection tool, just grab the lips there. I'm going to come to image, adjust brightness and contrast and just boost the contrast of those lips there. That's going to look a lot better when we put our color on top of them. I'm going to come over to my colors and quickly grab my red reference and selecting our lips layer with the brush. Let's bring that down a little. We're just going to go ahead and draw on that. And with our lips fully coloured in, we're going to come over to our Layers panel and again click on the Blending option and click Multiply. And straight after, we're going to quickly click on the face layer with the eraser tool, just quickly get rid of that pink face so we got ourselves some nice white teeth there. And finally, we want to create those eyes. So if we come up and I'm going to come to my colour reference, and quickly select the blue, come over, and with the eye layer selected, I'm gonna grab a brush and just boost it up a little bit and just go ahead and draw on top of the eyelids. And again, coming down and click on multiply. And with a little zoom out, There is our finished pop art image. Now, there are more effects you can add to this image to enhance the illusion of the screen print by adding some text to the foreground image. And I'm going to be covering this in the next video. And I'll also be showing how to create that classic Warhol poster where there's multiple images in different colors. So if you wish to see that, click on the next video now. The link is in the description or you can click this button right here. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Have fun guys, and I will see you next time.